Hey there everybody, the Destroy Rex here, and welcome back to Let's Play Kirby's Dream Collection. We're in part two now, and we have some history. In 1997, the UK returned control of Hong Kong to China, the first Harry Potter book was published in UK, and the Prius was launched in Japan. Woohoo! But we don't care about that, we care about the Kirby games, and we're going to look at Kirby's Star Stacker first. Um, Kirby's Star, Kirby Star Stacker was released in 1997, of course. Um, they also did release a remake of this, of Kirby's Star Stacker, which is roughly translated to Kirby's Sparkling Kids for the Super Famicom. And that was released in 1998. And they also released that Kirby's Sparkling Kids on the Wii Virtual Console in Japan on J January 5th, 2010. However, I don't live in Japan. I cannot access the the Japanese game, so there you go. Sorry. But yeah, there we go. We have... Basically, it is a puzzle game. And we are reunited with Rick, Kine, and Koo. Yay! Now, as far as this game goes, it looks somewhat similar to um, Dr. Mario and Poyo Poyo, I suppose. Um, where you pretty much match up the corresponding, um, three or four of the same, um, characters together. Like, three kinds, three coups, three ricks. Match them all together, you clear blocks. But there you go. Um, I wish I can tell you a lot more about this game, but I have never played it. And I really don't have any intention on playing this game. It was not released in the compilation disc, so, um... If I want to play it, I'll have to either buy it, or I'll have to find a ROM, and I don't want to find a ROM, so there you go. The key is to key to high, ch to high scores with chain reactions. Interesting. There's the Kirby dance! Yay! <laughs> I love that Kirby dance. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye to Kirby's Star Stacker, and look at another game. Kirby's Dream Land 3. Yay! It introduced a few new allies for Kirby. Um, it reintroduces Rick the Hamster, Koo the Owl, Kind the Ocean Sunfish, and it introduces Nago the Cat, Pitch the Bird, Choo Choo the Octopus. Not only that, it also reintroduces somebody that appeared in Kirby's Dream Land 2, but he is completely playable in Kirby's Dream Land 3, and that is Gooey! So there you go. Um, the graphics for this game, they were more pastel-like compared to the, um, compared to what they were in Kirby's, um, in, in Kirby's Superstar. And let's see, this game, the last Nintendo published in the USA for the Super Nintendo, that text is going really, really slow. But yeah, it's not the very last game that was released for the NES in the US. The very last game that was released in the US was actually Frogger. That was the last game that was released in the US. Well, North America, I should say. Um, in Japan, it was not the final. It wasn't the final game in Japan either, so there you go. <laughs> But yeah, um, the graphics themselves, they are pastel-like compared to what they were in Kirby Superstar. Um, for the most part, um, if you've played, um, if you have played Kirby's Dream Land 2, then you can more or less assume who the big boss of the game will be. But if you haven't, then I'm not going to tell you because I will tell you when we get to Kirby's Dream Land 2. But, um, the pastel c uh, graphics don't really, you know, please me all that much. But it's not about the graphics, it's about the gameplay. And that's the most important part about playing a video game, is the gameplay. If the gameplay is boring, then why play the game? In 1998, the, Wimper the Winter Olympics were held in Japan, the assembly of the International Space Station began, and Nintendo released the Game Boy Color! Yay! <laughs> So, what we're going to look at 1999, the first non-stop trip around the world via hot air balloon occurred. 
the world's population reached 6 billion, and Kirby appeared in the first Super Smash Bros. fighting game. Which I'll try and LP that at some point. But let's go ahead and skip over to the year 2000. In the year 2000, the Summer Olympics were held in Australia. The International Space Station received its first resident crew, and George W. Bush was elected President of the United States. However, we're going to look at Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards. Yay! I have never played this game. It is on the compilation disc, so I am excited about eventually playing this game. But we're going to... I still can't read the box art. I wish I could, but I cannot. I know. I'm so blind! I'm so blind! <laughs> but yeah, we're going to be looking into this game at some point in the future. I don't know when I'm going to actually LP this game, but I will look into it, and after doing a test playthrough or two, I will play this game. But yes, this adventure took Kirby to exciting new planets and gave Kirby the ability to mix copy abilities. Ooh, that sounds nice. <laughs> copy abilities together to create impressive power combos. Yeah, if you want to learn more about what's some of the basics behind this game, you can pretty much um, read the scrolling text at the bottom, because I am not going to read it anymore. But as you can gather, Kirby is not the only playable character in this game. King DDD was playable too. And that is awesome. After all, everybody loves King DDD. Let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Can't really think of anything else to say for right now because I haven't actually played this game yet, but I will eventually play it. Let's see, as you can see, the game is in 2.5D. Yay. <laughs> oh well, anyway, um, I wish I could say more about this game, but um, I can't because I haven't played it yet. But give me some time and I will play it. But we're going to go ahead and leave Kirby 64 and we're going to look at 2001 with Kirby's Kirby Tilt and Tumble. But first, a 16-year-old successfully climbed Mount Everest and Nintendo released the Game Boy Advance and the GameCube. Ooh, that's that fun. But, yes, this is Kirby Tilt and Tumble for the Game Boy Color. We're not going to be playing this game because I don't own a Game Boy Color, and even if I did, um, there is no way I can actually successfully LP this game because it used Tilt Physics. So, there you go. <laughs> but the music is kind of catchy, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, it used accelerometers to control Kirby, and the, cur the goal of the game is to guide, guide Kirby to the level's goal within the allotted time by physically tilting the Game Boy in the direction in which a player wishes to move him. The game registers a pop action when the player quickly jerks the Game Boy in the vertical direction, doing so will jerk Kirby into the air. Isn't that all very, very lovely? And that is the reason why I will not be playing this game for a very long while, because... Or ever, I don't imagine, because of the fact that I don't have... I'm... There's no way I'm going to be able to record this game. So, it'd be nice if I could, but I can't. Oh well, it is okay. I will live. I will live. I'll try to live. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> the game pack itself contained a tiny motion sensing device. That is called the accelerometer. That's the device. But yeah, that anyway, um I won't be LPing this game, obviously, because um 
obviously I don't have a, um, well, I do have a Game Boy Advance and a Game Boy Advance SP, but I am not, I don't have any way of recording myself playing the game, so therefore I will not play it. However, if you have fond memories of this game, go ahead and leave the, your fond memories in the comments and share them with the world because I'm sure everybody wants to know your opinions because I don't know anything about this game. Yeah, I know it might not sound as fun for me to actually talk about the history of the Kirby franchise, but... Uh, you know, it's, I thought it would be a good way to start off some potential Kirby LPs, which I'm going to re LP um, Kirby's Dream Land, obviously. But yes, let's skip to 2002. 2002, the Winter Olympics were held in Salt Lake City, East Timor, became the first new country of the 21st century, and Euro coins and notes entered circulation. Groovy! Except we're not going to care about that all that much, because we're going to look at... A Kirby game and the Kirby anime! First, the game Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, which is basically a remake, an enhanced remake of Kirby's Adventure. And it, of course, it was released on the Game Boy Advance. Yay! <laughs> and as you can see from the box art, it used, um, it used some um, character models from the anime, so that is awesome. So yes, um, I still can't read the box art, so if you can read it, go you! I can't read it, because I need a magnifying lens to actually read that. That is very, very small text. I cannot read it. I am so blind. So very, very blind. I'm so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. But let's go ahead and play the video. HAL! Laboratory Incorporated! Yay! Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland! I would love to play this game if I had a, um... If I had a, um... Game Boy player and a um, Nintendo GameCube. But I don't, so... It's alright. Besides, I have... Kirby's Adventure for the Nintendo. Which is gonna be very useful because... Well, I can LP that game instead. But yes, not too bad. I mean, this game is indeed very, very awesome. Oh, I wish I could play this game. I really wish I could. But yes, all the graphics are... The graphics, of course, are much better compared to what they were in Kirby's Adventure. But yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I cannot. I would love to LP this game, but uh, in due time, Chris. In due time. And yes, my name is Chris. In case you haven't figured that out, <laughs> if you have, then yeah, my name is still Chris. But I call myself Destroyer X because it is more epic. But anyway, the next thing we're going to briefly look at, because I'm not going to play the episodes is Kirby right back at ya. It's just an anime that was released in 2002. It was broadcasted in 2002 in the US. And it was um, dubbed by 4Kids Entertainment, which I don't really care for that dubbing company all that much, but to each their own. Um, obviously in Japan, this series was called Hoshi no Kirby. Which is literally translated to Kirby of the Stars, which the bulk of the Kirby games, is, they're called Hoshi no Kirby, and some other tag. But anyway, next game, but first, the Human Genome Project was completed in 2003. Concord made its first commercial flight, and re Nintendo released a Game Boy Advance SP. Nice. But Kirby's Air Ride was released in 2003. Yay! Now, this game looks pretty interesting. Uh, I've never played it, but I will... I'm, depending upon whether or not I feel like it, I may play it. I don't know. It is okay, though. I will live. Oh, yes. <laughs> we have... You, you can see Kirby right there. And you can also see Meta Knight. But let's look at the video. Because... That 
Video makes everything better! Doesn't that look so awesome? So very awesome! Makes you want to play the game, doesn't it? Makes you want to play it, doesn't it? Play it! Play it, play it, play it! But yeah, it's a racing game. What can I say? Um... Let's see, the controls for this game may have been simple, but becoming a top scoring air ride racer to took lots of practice and strategy. I did not know that, but then again, I... Well, I just didn't know that, so there you go. <laughs> but yeah, eventually I will get around to... I don't know if I'll ever play this game, but it looks interesting, but I don't know. I may end up playing it at some point. Apparently, the... I just now realized that the... Um, I'm looking right here, in that, um, and it says here that on December 13th, 2012... Four kids emerged from bankruptcy, and they are now known as Four Licensing Corporation. I did not know that. That is interesting. It doesn't change my feelings about that um, about that company, but that is interesting nonetheless. Anyway, 2004, the Summer Olympics were held in Athens, Greece. NASA rover, NASA rover's Opportunity and Spirit landed on Mars, and Nintendo released the Nintendo DS. But yes, we're going to be looking at Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Which in this game, Kirby was split into four differently colored Kirby's. Lucky, luckily, he could call call them for help with his trusty cell phone. Ooh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting, nonetheless. Uh, there's There are a lot of games in the Kirby franchise I would love to play. Don't get me wrong, I would love to play a lot of these games, it's just that, um... I can't LP these games until I get a GameCube and a Game Boy Player! I really need to get a... I really need to get those. But yay, there we go! Kirby's Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Woohoo! In this ca in this game, players didn't have to defeat stages in a specific preset order. I wish this thing would not scroll so slowly. But yes, instead they were able to freely explore the games. Vast new world and choose their their own paths to victory. That text is so slow. But yeah, I'm still surprised that four kids ended up getting emerging from ba Chapter 11 bankruptcy as, and now they're for licensing corporation. But oh well. Ah, <laughs> uh, I cannot... This just make Watching this video just makes me want to actually play these games more and more, because I haven't... Because I... The games I typically play the most were basically, um... The game I played the most was basically Kirby Superstar. So, that's what makes things a l And seeing all this is just quite amazing, in all honesty. But yes, so far so good. One day we will get... We will play this game at some point. I don't know when, but we will play it. We will do an LP, and we will be happy! 
Well, I'll be happy because this game looks pretty sweet. Anyway, we're going to skip over to 2005, where Danica Patrick became the first woman to lead an Indiana Indianapolis 500. Uh, see, the Stanley Cup went unclaimed for the first time since 1919 to, due to a lockout, and Nintendo released the Game Boy Micro. Now, this game I'm not going to be able to LP because it's on Nintendo DS, but this game is called Kirby Canvas Curse. Kirby returned to ball form, this time the roll along a rainbow line drawn by the player with the stylus and whatnot. So there you go. So yeah, um, obviously because it's a DS game, I can't LP it. So I know there are ROMs that are probably floating around the web, but I do not play ROMs. So therefore, if you want to see the game, I mean, you can watch another LP or to see that to to actually see the game being played, but I'm not going to LP it because I do not want to get into any kind of trouble at all. No, 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 no. Ah, but yes, Kirby Canvas Curse. Let's go ahead and take a look at this game. Ah, oh, the music is so epic. I love it. Now, let's see here. Um... I'm going to try and read this really quickly. In, in this unique adventure, Kirby followed the rainbow line that the player drew on the touch screen with his or her stylus. Oh, the text is so slow. The rainbow line could also be used to shield Kirby from attacks. But Kirby wasn't the only star of this game. Other familiar characters. Yeah, I'm going to stop reading it now. And there's a reason why I'm going to stop reading this. Because we are almost out of time, everybody. <laughs> so yes, in part three, we're going to finish up the Kirby history. And then after that, at some point, we will begin playing the Kirby games. So, and then after that, we'll eventually get into playing the challenge stages of Kirby's Dream Collection. So, until next time, everybody, take care and ciao for now. Bye. <laughs>